Welcome, uh, my name is Victor Castro. This is part two of uh, the videos exploring Moodle adding activities. On the previous video, we added a quiz activity and we also added an online text activity. Now, the quiz activity we stopped right here where we are editing the quiz. Now, we added the quiz activity, but it has no questions yet. We need to create some questions and add them to the quiz in order to finish our activity. So, um, with Moodle here, uh, you build a question bank from which you can add questions to your quiz. You can also take a look at uh, question banks for this activity, for the course, for the course category, or for uh, the system. Right now, uh, we, uh, we don't have many. So if we want to um, create a new question, we're going to be creating a new question right uh, in a minute. I'm just uh, setting the display question from subcategories to, to off. Uh, now, create, create a new question. When you click here, you'll see that there's uh, different question types that Moodle allows you to create. You can create um, calculated questions, descriptions, essays, matching, embedded answers, multiple choice short answers, numerical, uh, ra random short answer, matching, and true and false. Most of these are self-corrected, so that means that you set the correct answer and then Moodle will take care of the grading for you. Now, a couple of these, like the essay and the short answer question, are uh, manually graded. So you'll have to go into the attempt and manually grade those type of questions. So let's really quickly create a um, true and false uh, type question, just to see how it works. Now, as, as with the rest of Moodle, the forms are very, very similar. Uh, here, what you need to do is you need to name your question. Now, this is not the question. This is just a name for it to identify it. It could be something like uh, question one, though it helps if you have a, a little bit of um, descriptive uh, name, uh, global warming, for example, global warming. So now we type the question text and this being a true and false question, I'm going to type in a statement. Um, global warming is bad. Just a statement. Now, uh, the default question grade, this uh, refers to how many points this specific question is worth. If you are planning a test, for instance, with 10 questions, you might, uh, or if there's partial credit, for, for questions, you might want to um, do two, for example, as a default question grade, and a uh, pen penalty factor of one, that's, that's by default. So default question grade maybe two, so then you can give half credit if you want, or uh, just leave it at one, you know, for one, one point for each question. The general feedback, um, is uh, in general after the student responds the question what does he see so you might uh, give some feedback like thank you now if the question if the student answers uh, now here we go correct answer we have to define the correct answer will be true so if the student responds true we're gonna say correct. And if the student answer is false, we're going to say incorrect. This could be more descriptive feedback, of course, but um, we're going to do this right now uh, this way. So what we've done so far, we named the question, we wrote our question text, we defined the, the, the value for the question, uh, we're giving general feedback for the question, just a thank you. Then we're saying it's a cor the correct answer is true. If the student answer is true, we say correct. If the student answer is false, we say incorrect. Save the changes. So there we go. Now we have in our question bank, we have already two questions. We have sample question and 
global warming question. It's a true and false question. So what do we want to do now? Um, we want to select the questions from the list, from the bank, and we want to add them to the quiz. So we select and we click Add to Quiz. And here we go. Now we have uh, the, the questions in our quiz and we're able to decide a couple of things. If we want to take questions out of the quiz, we can click on the Remove button and that will remove the question. Okay, And we can reorder the questions. Okay. Uh, we can also uh, show the reordering tool which would let us um, like for instance if I type here 21 then it will reorder the questions and, and reorder the, the numbers so that, so that they fit in what we typed. So it's an easier way to reorder than just dragging or clicking and moving one question, one position up or down. We can set the grade for the question here as well. So for instance, this is only a two question quiz. So we're going to say this is 50 and this is uh, 50. We're going to save those changes. So the total is 100. But notice this, the maximum grade for the quiz is 10. So what's going to happen is uh, the, the quiz will be graded over 100 but then that number will be uh, averaged down to a maximum grade of 10 for the quiz. So actually it doesn't really matter how much we have on the grade. We can do it like for example if if this question is twice as important as this one I can say that this one's worth 4 and this one's worth 2 just uh, giving the weight of the question. The total will be 6 but anyway, uh, the result will be uh, averaged up to uh, a maximum grade of 10. So when the students see the result, they will see um, well, they will see it over 10. Okay, so we're done editing our, qui our quiz. We might want to add a few more questions and add them to the quiz, etc. Uh, but uh, in general, I think we're, we're done. So now we can preview our quiz and this is what it will look like for our students. Uh, once they start the quiz, they will be able to submit each question or submit the page or submit all and finish. Okay, so those are the options that they have. Uh, in your instructions, you might want to say, for instance, answer every question at the end, click submit all and finish. Or you might ask them to raise your hand so you can submit it for them, etc. Or, you know, different ways of doing it. Uh, on the results page, you will see the attempts made. Uh, in this case, there are zero attempts right now. Nobody has tried to do the test. You can also regrade the test. Or you can do the manual grading on uh, items that require manual grading like the essay or the short answer type uh, questions. There's also an, a really really robust item analysis page which will tell you give you some statistics of how many people get the question correct, how many people get the question incorrect, uh, percentages etc. And uh, the general info for the test uh, this is what students will uh, see when they log on to try to take the test. They will see the instructions and then they will see a button uh, when, the, when the quiz is open. Instead of preview, it will say attempt or submit. Okay? Um, so that's the quiz. If we return to our course page, we will see that now we have the new activity which is quiz one and this is what our students will see and they will uh, click on that be taken here and and be able to start um, an attempt okay uh, that's that's the quiz activity uh, as I mentioned before there are a lot more activities to take a look at but I encourage you to try, explore, uh, try each one, see what they do, see what the students are required to do and get to know just each activity type 
um, really well so that you can uh, take advantage of them. I'll tell you right now that for me the most uh, popular activity types are online text or upload a single file in the case of um, giving my students assignment that they have to turn in a document or an image or a PowerPoint presentation or whatever. Uh, an offline activity doesn't require anything from the students, but it adds a graded item to your gradebook, so that's useful sometimes. And uh, the quiz is really uh, important and very useful. Also, the forum, if you add, uh, there are different forum types, but you can add a forum for a topic as an activity and have it be graded as well. Uh, have you could grade the students contributions so get to know each uh, activity type uh, and I'm sure you won't uh, you won't regret it so that's part two of the video on adding activities I hope it is helpful again the recommendation explore all activity types thank you very much